So it is the final weekend of campaigning in the U.S. elections, and the most recent polling data shows that the Democrat presidential challenger Joe Biden is ahead of President Donald Trump. But can the numbers be trusted? You'll recall in 2016, polls forecast that another Democrat, Hillary Clinton, was in the lead against Trump. But that was not to be because Trump actually won the Electoral College in a victory that, in fact, continues to haunt pollsters in the United States. Let's speak to international relations lecturer at Wits University, Professor John Stremlau then about the integrity and the weight of what we find in the polling. Prof, a very good evening. Great to speak to you. So how seriously are the polls in the U.S. being taken this time around? Well, a couple of things. One, they're much more sophisticated in understanding the dynamics in so-called swing or battleground states so that when you have a composite of all of the polling being done as the very good pollster group uh, 538 does almost every day, then you have a good chance of understanding what the odds are. At the moment, it's 90 percent in favor of Trump Harris and I mean uh, Biden Harris and uh, and 10 percent chance of being elected for um, for for Trump and and Mike Pence. Now. That's still significant because surprises could happen in battleground states or there could be some finagling by Trump who's impugned the integrity of the election process. But at the same time, two other things. One, Trump is now known because he's been president for four years. Back in 2016, a lot of people were apparently willing to take a chance on him. And secondly, you've got the COVID crisis, which is hitting rocket record numbers now, 90,000 today alone in new cases. So that um, it seems to me as though Biden-Harris are odds on favors to win, favorites to win. What will happen to the Senate and other down ballot elections is, of course, important too. But I think um, we should know the result by Wednesday morning here. And you're speaking about how the polls have become more sophisticated than from 2016. What, two of the issues that were raised back in 2016 was that there was an undercounting of Trump support. There was also an issue of the quote-unquote shy Trump voter, Americans who supported Donald Trump, but because of some of the reaction to his position, were not willing, at least in the polling, to speak openly about their support for him. In reality, is there any surefire way of getting around those challenges, or do we just have to take the polls with a pinch of salt? Well, Harry Truman famously said the only reliable poll is the one taken on election day, that is the voting. Now, in this case, it's very, very complicated with all the early voting, with all the talk about um, challenges that would be in the courts. But, but by and large, let's not forget that in 2016, Hillary Clinton still won by 3 million votes. Uh, the, the, um, the, the polling that has been being indicated now with, with Biden-Harris is higher uh, against an unpopular president than any time since 1996 when uh, Bill Clinton was the incumbent and far ahead, or the two incumbents who lost after one term, Jimmy Carter in 1980 and and uh, George H.W. Bush in 1992 to the first Clinton victory, um, their polling numbers were even uh, not as bad as, as, as Donald Trump's are right now. The real unknown in this equation, though, and this is very important for South Africans to bear in mind, is, is the, the, the racism of Donald Trump has been his identifying characteristic since he made the birthing issue of uh, Barack Obama a, a case. He's brought out a backlash that is certainly prevalent among um, white conservative rural Americans who want to see America great again as it was, not the diverse, inclusive uh, America that Kamala Harris symbolizes and that Joe Biden argues for and the Democrats argue for. And, and the, the ethnic nationalism of Donald Trump is unlike anything I've seen as blatant as that in my lifetime. Racism has been endemic and a problem for America that has been brought to light now more dramatically than in the past. But it really is um, uh, an unknown factor in this. But I, my guess is that the country has moved beyond it. If it has not, then I think South Africans and everybody else in the world should be concerned. Despite that, Prof, what you said at the beginning, you mentioned the issue of Hillary Clinton winning the popular vote, which she did. Donald Trump, <clears throat> I beg your pardon, 
beat her because he was able to get the majority of votes through the Electoral College. Explain for those of us watching from South Africa just the voting dynamic and why this Electoral College is so important in whether a candidate eventually makes it to the White House. Well, bear in mind that the Constitution of the United States was set up in 1789, and it's a states' rights constitution. The South African Constitution is a human rights constitution, one person, one vote. But in the, in the bargain for the 13 colonies as after the uh, independence struggle against Britain, um, the smaller states wanted the reassurance that they would not be dominated by the larger states. And so they created a Senate with two senators for each state. And as a result today, you have a rural state like Wyoming with two senators and less than a million voters next door to California with 40 million voters. This really matters in the uh, Senate composition, which does pass on judicial appointments, as we uh, know famously, because there have just been a very conservative court majority engineered by the Republican minority. But it also factors into the election electoral college because the Electoral College is uh, undemocratically uh, weighted for the small, rural, conservative, predominantly white states. And that has been something that they tried to overturn with a constitutional amendment in the 1960s. And the Republicans realized the only way that they can capture, and I use that term in a South African case, capture the state as a minority is through the Electoral College. And even uh, Trump's campaign manager concedes that they'll never win the popular vote. But the popular vote has to be more than 4%. And at the moment, Biden-Harris looks like they're scheduled to, 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 to best that by, by several, several percentage points at least. So I'm still confident that Biden-Harris will win. But it does put an extra burden on them because of that electoral college, which should be dispensed with. But... That needs a constitutional amendment, and that's very hard in the U.S. case to engineer. Professor John Stremlau, thank you so much for speaking to us on ENCA tonight.